Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching The Political Vigilante. Well, all we've heard is that the Houthis are an Iranian proxy, and Iran, we all know, is bad, right? Because the corporate media tells us that Iran is bad. So Iran bad. Houthis friends with Iran. So war in Yemen, good. Thank you, corp media, for justifying your war machine. But wait a minute. U.S. admits Yemen Houthis aren't an Iranian proxy as the death toll climbs. The death toll in Yemen has reached 102,000 people, according to data released by the Armed Conflict Location and Event Data Project on October of 2019. So that's October. So we're now in January, so it's even worse than that. But what happened? The Trump administration denies that it's fighting Iran and Yemen. Wait, what? This is why you know the deep state doesn't like Trump, because he just says things he's not supposed to. Oh, we're leaving the troops there to guard the oil. No, 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 no don't say that. Like, <laughs> no, you're supposed to lie and say the freedom and justice and the war on terror and the global spread of democracy. No, 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 don't just... <laughs> This said, ah, we've been trying to get into a war with Iran. Killing Soleimani was a part of it. We've done all these false flags last spring, shooting down a drone, our drone, flying our drone into their airspace, and then it gets shot down the way out. No, it wasn't in their airspace. Yes, it was. We tried to bomb a ship in the Strait of Hormuz. That's, that, 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 I just call that false flag highway. We've been trying to ramp this war. And one of the things we've been doing is to saying the Houthis are Iranian backed. Brian Cook, the U.S. Special Representative for Iran, stated that Iran does not speak for the Houthis, nor has the best interest of the many people at heart. Wait, what? The book? Since the war started in 2015, the United States government has maintained one steadfast talking point. The Houthis are Iranian proxy in Yemen. 2015, let's be real clear, Obama... One of the wars he started, he got into office, we were in two wars. When he left, we were in seven. This is one of the five wars that he started while jailing Ch Chelsea Manning and having her tortured in jail. That's Obama, but his tweets were nice. So we all got to love him. And this narrative has been pushed throughout, right? Here's a story from Reuters. 2017, exclusive, Iran steps up support for the Houthis in Yemen's war. Sources. Oh, that's what I love about the corporate war machine media. They just say sources. Sources says Bernie told Liz Warren women couldn't be president. Who? Who said it? Who are the sources? Well, sources. Sources said it. Oh. Oh, okay. I, uh, uh, Trump is a lizard person from another planet. I have sources. 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 Iran sending an advanced weapon and military advisors to Yemen's rebel Houthi movement, stepping up support for its Shiite ally in a civil war whose outcome could sway the balance of power in the Middle East, regional and Western sources say. Who are the sources? And of course, the, these journalists that make these big, you know, six, seven, eight figure incomes, they don't go, what are your sources? How are you confirming? What are your sources? Oh, sources. I just have sources. I just say that. I have sources. Yeah. Ron Placone uh, deliberately set a toaster on fire in uh, Australia. I have sources. But Graham, I thought you were at yoga when that happened. Yeah, but it's sources. Sources told me that. What are your sources? Oh, uh, there's a secret. Private. Uh, national security. Yeah, yeah, there, there. I can't. National security. I can't tell you because of national security. Isn't that always the fun one? All the United States has to do whenever a government official has to answer a question about the war in Yemen is mention Iran. Just, oh, Iran. Oh, it's Iran. It's Iran. It's a proxy war. It has nothing to do with Iran. Even the UN claimed that the death toll in Yemen was static at 10,000 for three straight years. For three straight years. The State Department gets this message out and they can, 
This is how it's done. I'm going to show you in a second how they do it. It is the international community's best interest to censor the war in Yemen. France, Italy, and the UK contributed and profited from this war, as well as Germany and Norway, who both later stopped selling arms to Saudi Arabia after public outrage. So that's a place here when you feel like you're powerless, you can't do anything. Public pressure works. We need to keep the public pressure on to end this war in Yemen and Iran. But just notice this. Oh, we're talking about impeachment. We're talking about did Bernie tell Liz Warren women can't be president? Did we, we're talking about all oh, the, the Ukraine and all this nonsense. Guess what we're not talking about? The 102,000 people or more now that are dead in Yemen because of this ridiculous war. The fact that we sell arms to Saudi Arabia, they give us oil, we sell them weapons. Trump sold $103 billion in weapons. Obama sold $113 billion in weapons, just so we're clear on how great Obama was and how they're so different. These presidents are so different. All American allies. <laughs> They've all profited from war, so they're playing ball with the United States. We help people that we pay up our allies get profit from war. This way people in the Middle East don't trust anyone in the West. How could they? All these rich countries are profiting. Yemen is the poorest country in the history of the world. And we're bombing it? Oh, man. Why don't we drone strike some homeless shelters here in America? Because they probably are, got ties to Iran. How do I know that? Sources. The Houthis did not adhere to one particular religion, although the majority sent around Zaidi branch of Islam. The Houthis believe in social justice, anti-imperialism, nationalism, and federalism. <laughs> Does that sound like Iran? Yemen is a Sunni majority with 75% of the citizens in Yemen identifying as Sunni and 25% of the population identifying as Shiite. It's, it's, this next one, there's so much, I know you probably can't see this because it's too small, but I just, I wanted to read, and this is from this article, I'm not an expert on Islam and the subsects of it, or I'm not an expert on Houthis. Or I'm not an expert, but this is just from this article. The link is in the show notes. Yemen is a Sunni majority, as I said. The Houthis have been a representation of this minority in Yemen since 1994 and remained an unarmed political movement until 2004. Zaidi-led governments ruled over Yemen from the year 960 to 1962. That's not a typo. 960, not 1960, 960. So a thousand years. This ideologically is almost exclusive to Yemen and was practiced for over 1,000 years. The narrative pushed by the State Department and talking heads and media that the Houthis are a rebel group that sprouted up in 2014 due to funds and arms allegedly provided by Iran is negligent journalism and myopic diplomacy. Negligent journalism. But they know two things. One, most Americans don't know the, the differences in all of these religions. Like if you grew up in the Middle East, you know about Christianity, but you don't know that America has Catholic, it has, um, I mean, Judaism is a form of Christianity. <laughs> the Methodists, the Southern Baptists, uh, the Lutherans, I mean, I could go on down the line, the Pentecostals and their weird snake dance and shit, like, right? What if you just said all the Christians are violent, they're all tied into, they're extremists, like that Southern Baptist church in, in Kansas that shows up with the God hates fag signs? That's like equating that type of Christianity with like the Methodists. So usually that's the, if you want to find a hippie church in your town, a hippie Christian church is usually the Methodists, right? <laughs> but they know most Americans don't know the difference. And they just put it out there. But it's, it's, it's nonsense. Iran warned Houthis against a Yemen takeover. This was in... This was in the Huff Post in 2015. They just put this stuff out there. But this is like, but even this, they just warned the Houthis against the Yemen takeover. They didn't say we're going to back them. 
But even this, but notice this is just Iran Houthis. They just tie that together. So how does this happen? How does this happen? Well, I did a story about this last year. It was submitted by Eric Husso, um, who's a Patreon supporter. But I just wanted to show you this, how they do it. The White House, the CIA, and the Pentagon issue talking points to these AP, AFP, and Reuters. These three main agencies feed everything else. So I just wanted to show you how much, the, oh, Fox is so different than CNN. No, they're not. Look, there's the, tele, there's the, time, the LA Times, the New York Times, NPR, Wall Street Journal, BuzzFeed, USA Today, right? And then European newspapers, all the newspapers in the West, all those countries I just listed that profited and are continuing to profit, except Germany and Norway, that are continuing to profit from the war in Yemen, they all get their news from main thing, which is fed by this. So that's how they, you make it seem like, wow, I read this story in a bunch of different places, so it must be true. And then I've even showed you how then the big talent agencies who have people from the State Department there who've worked on the Clinton campaign, and, but they come from up here, right? We talked to Tarek Haddad, my interview with Tarek Haddad, how he said, look, there's people whose college is paid for by the State Department to get journalist degrees, and then they're planted at all these places. That's why he had that OPCW leak story at Newsweek, and they, they wouldn't publish it, and he had to resign. See, it all comes from this. They want you to think that it's all these different things. But when Stephen Colbert, and even all the way down to late night TV, and, and when Stephen Colbert and Anderson Cooper, all of the same agent, you see how it, it's one message. They spread it out to make it seem like, boy, every, all these independent people come to the same conclusion. No, that is a lie. And here's how it happens. Look, here's just a, a bunch of German newspapers in different, right? Iran, right? This is the German ones. All these other languages, Russia threatens to rebuild military forces in Syria. See, they just put it in here. All they just, they just, ISIS, Syria. So you think, wow, all these news sources are talking, all the German paper is talking about Putin. You know, an American paper is talking about Putin and Russia and Syria. Iran provokes West with long range missile launch. Boy, boy, the West has got it. Even the German papers got it. See? No, they didn't. They all got it from here, funneled through there. And that's how this happens. See how simple that is? I'm telling you, the more you pay attention, the more you follow the money, the, actually the simpler it is. They try to make it so confusing, but the simpler it is. Iran has nothing to do with the Houthis. We're there for two reasons. One, to let Saudi Arabia do whatever the hell they want. Gives us a strategic stronghold. And we can concoct this fake narrative that it's Iran doing these awful things. We gotta stop, this is what we did with the Soviet Union. That's why we gotta go to Korea to stop the Red Menace. We gotta go to Vietnam to stop the Red Menace. Soviets bad, Russia bad, Russia bad, Russia, Russia bad, Russia bad, Russia, Russia, Putin bad, Russia, Russia bad, Russia, 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 NATO, Russia, 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 Iran, ISIS, ISIS, Assad, Syria, ISIS, Iran, Iran, ISIS, Russia bad, bad, Russia, Russia, Iran, ISIS, ISIS, Assad bad, Assad, oh, Tulsi Assad apologist. When Stephen Colbert calls Tulsi an Assad apologist on, on a late night comedy show, it's because it came from here, it went through here, went to his agent, and that's why he pushed it on CBS. He's on CBS. Stephen Colbert works for CBS. Talking points, CBS, his producer, his agent. Hey, Tulsi's coming on. You better not let her off the hook on this Assad thing. Is Stephen Colbert working for the CIA? I don't know. Let's just say he isn't. Let's just say he's an actor, but they feed him all these stories. And then he reads the news because he used to be on The Daily Show. So look what he reads. And then his agent tells his producer. See it? All connected. Houthis have no connection to Iran. And this is a State Department talking point. 
That's why you get your news here. If you want to, if you want to listen to bullshit, you can go here for your news, right? But you see, I don't get, <laughs> I don't get it from up top. <laughs> Actually, you support this show. You go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwin. That's who supports the show. So I need your help because these people want me to shut up. And this, one of the logos that isn't here, just because there probably wasn't room in the graphic, Google. Who owns YouTube? Google. Who is demonetizing me? Google. Who is unsubscribing you? Google. I have 59,000 subscribers. My, sh my videos should be getting a minimum of 10,000 views. On average, you should get 10, uh, 10 to 20 percent of your subscribers, people who actively want to watch your show, 20% of them should be watching your videos on a minimum. With 58, 59,000 subscribers, I should be getting a minimum of 10,000 views on my, on my videos. And then some will pop up to 15, 20, 40,000. Maybe one doesn't do as well and it gets seven, six or 7,000, but you want, look at it. 1,000, 2,000 views, 5,000 views. Once in a while, something pops to 10 or something like that. But like my, my baseline should be 10 to 20,000 views per video. That should be my like standard. And that's because they're throttling the shows like this. So I need your support. Go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood, rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood, and join Ron Placon, Placon and I. Placon, Placon, whatever. Let's call the whole thing. Don't do it. Join Ron Placon and I on the road. Progressive comedy tour. February 8th, we are in Tucson, Arizona. February 29th, we're in San Francisco. March uh, 12, 13, and 14, we are in Orlando, Tampa, and Miami. April 24th, Seattle. April 25th, we are in Portland, Oregon. May, we're in Indianapolis, Detroit, and Cleveland. June, we're in Louisville and Nashville. We'll be adding Atlanta shortly. July, we are in Chicago and Milwaukee the weekend before the Democratic Convention. Yes, I will be in Milwaukee for the Democratic Convention. August, we are in uh, D.C., Virginia, and Philly. September, we are in New York City, Boston, Portland, Maine, and Burlington, Vermont. October, we are in Madison and Minneapolis. Some new cities on that list, and we're returning to some great uh, cities that we had great shows at. Go to GrahamElwood.com for all the tour dates. Thank you for supporting independent media because I ain't one of these liars.